Sulphur Springs Baptist Church. Amen. You might take your All-American number 252, higher ground, pressing on the upward way. Amen.
Amen. Someone else. Yes, sir. 103. 103. Honey and the Rock. Amen. That rock followed them, and that rock was Christ. Amen. Honey and the Rock.
pass you by. He won't pass you by. Amen. He'll listen. Mm, let me out of throne of mercy. Mercy of God. Amen. His grace. Save me by thy grace. Amen. You, you'll ask Jesus for that. He'll do it. He'll save you. He says he will. The word of God says he will. Amen. Yes, ma Amen. Yes, ma'am. 84, mansion over the hilltop. Amen. Number 84, mansion over the hilltop. Amen. I got one of them. Sure do. Amen. <laughs> Ain't on this world. That's right. Amen. I ain't gonna have to take no carpentry tools with me or nothing. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So wait, that's an Easter song. Hey, every day is a risen song for me. Every, every day is a day of first fruits. Amen. It's a feast of first fruits. Yes. Amen. Christ. Babylonian 
mystery religion. How can they keep going back to that and walk away from it? Because their eyes have been blinded. But then so has everybody else. The God of this world, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, I believe it is. Maybe 2 Corinthians 4, 4, but you can look it up. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. At least they see the glorious gospel of Christ and be saved. Amen. God wants you saved until you can see that glorious gospel. It says, but even in this day when Moses had read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. That's their promise. It's going to happen, folks. Israel is going to come to Christ. Going to come to know Him as Lord and Savior. Now the Lord is that Spirit, capital S, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If you want true liberty, you've got to have to have the Spirit of Christ. I don't care if you're locked up in prison. You can know what liberty is. Yes, amen. But now verse 18 is my text. But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It says here, are changed. Are changed. I want to preach this for a few minutes this morning on it's time for a change. Let's pray. Father, I ask you to open up my uh, mouth, Lord, fill it with your words and bring it forth, uh, Father, to your children. Accomplish, Lord, what you would have it accomplish. Uh, Father, that people would be humbled, that they would come to Calvary for salvation, Lord that we as Christians would humble our lives, turn from sin, and walk in your glory and your honor. Uh, Father, in this present ungodly uh, and unhonoring world. Father, we pray that uh, that veil that once covered Moses would not cover our hearts, but that we should shine forth the glory of Christ as those that have been begotten again uh, by your marvelous grace. We love you, Lord, and ask you today, speak to hearts and minds in the Name of Christ, Amen. <clears throat> but we all with an open face. So he's talking about that as a veil removed. So now we can behold Christ in all His glory. God's given us that privilege in the new birth to look upon Him, right? But it says here, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, our change. Uh, we just talked to Terry and Uncle Rothbacher about this. The tabernacle was you, as you, once you got past the brazen altar before you went into the Holy of Holies, there, there was that, that wash basin, that brass basin. It was made out of the, the ladies' uh, mirrors. They had brass mirrors polished real fine so they could look in them and see themselves. So these looking glasses, these looking mirrors, is what they built this wash basin out of. And so the priest, before they would go into the Holy of Holies, would come to this wash basin, and he would look down here. Of course, you look into something that has a mirror back to it. You're looking into war. What are you going to see? You're going to see yourself. And so when you're looking at that, it reflects back to you who you are. So if there's something in your life that needs to be gotten rid of, as you look into this place where you come to wash, uh, and it come to get clean before God, before you enter into His presence. Listen, folks, we're living on the edge of the day when God's people are going to be in His presence. I believe in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, it could happen today before this service is out. I look at the world around me and I see the message. And I can tell you this, we're going to be there in just a twinkle of an eye. You ain't going to have time to straighten up your life once the rapture takes place. If you're saved, you won't have time to straighten up your life after the rapture takes place. You're going to have to go there with God with the dirt and the filth on your life and stand before Him in judgment. But today you can come to something that will cleanse you and make you whole. The Bible says that Christ is our high priest, right? He is the one who we can go to. We can come to Him and plead to Him. If we confess our sins unto Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't have to go with Him with dirty hands and dirty faces. And dirty lips. We can go there clean. It's time for a change. It's time for God's people to clean up. Now, what is it that we're looking into? There's something that we can look into. There's a wash basin that 
them priests had before they went into the presence of God. There's something you and I are looking into before we get into the presence of God. Amen. Uh, the Bible uh, is basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what that's what the enactment is for. People, we're fixing to leave earth. We're right in here's your instructions on how we're to live, how we're to act, how we're to conduct ourselves, how we're to, to give the glory of Christ in our lives to be a reflection upon Him and to show others that there's life and life in Christ. Amen. It's time for a change. Yes. Christians who live worldly lives do not reflect the glory of God. Right. Yeah. you got to get polished up. you got to get cleaned up. We learned some things about this changing business and one of the things that we learn is that God doesn't change Amen. and man tries to live his life as though God did change. God hasn't changed his mind about anything from before creation was ever made. He hasn't changed his holiness. He hasn't changed his righteousness. He hasn't changed his purity. Everything about him is still the same. His love is still the same. His judgment is still the same. God judges sin. The Bible says, and because we live in a world that's changing, we need something that doesn't change, and that's God. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. You don't have to get up tomorrow and worry about him being different than you went to bed with. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, 8, Jesus Christ. Now, if only God can't change, and, and God can't change, and He is what He is, Amen. and He never will change. So, one of the greatest testaments to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. God hasn't changed about the, the need of salvation. Amen. That we still all have sinned and fallen short of the gl Amen. glory of God. That everyone needs to be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. That's still true today. It needs to be a change where people get their mind off of work salvation and trying to earn their way into the presence of God. Trying to be good enough to get across that threshold of God's righteousness and you always, always, always will fall short of God's righteousness. The very best that you'll ever produce in your life is just filthy rags compared to Him. And you'll never step into the presence of a holy God with sin on your life. We live in a world that's constantly changing. We've got to get away from that thought of uh, where men have changed the the gospel of grace into a gospel of work, salvation. Amen. Yeah. We have got to stand upon the truth that uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. You can always tell whether a person is saved by grace or whether they're saved by works. Just ask them, uh, ask them if they're saved. Yeah, yeah. You know what they'll reply? They'll either say yes by the grace of God or yes, you know, I was baptized. Well, good luck. Yeah. You'll steam for just a split second when you hit the fires of hell, but then it's gone. Yeah. Baptismal waters ain't going to help you. Well, I swallowed a cookie and drank some juice. Well, good for you. You'll go to hell with a bellyache. I don't know what it is, but you can't get there by your own merit. Amen. Salvation is by the grace of God, has always been by the grace of God, and will always be by the grace of God, because we have a God who does not change. Amen. The world we live in is changing. Uh, the Bible says, And thou, Lord, in beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. The world we live in is changing. It's growing older. You know, I don't know exactly when.
when they discovered the, the second law of thermodynamics, but God already said here in His Word that that's just exactly what it is. Everything is dying. It's not getting better. It's not getting better. We're not progressing uh, in this world. We are, we are digressing, or is there such a word as degressing? I, what's the, what's the op opposite of, of uh, uh, progress? Is Congress, is Congress, Congress, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's my joke for today. That's my joke for today. You'll get that, right? Everything's changing. Everything's changing. This world that we live in is changing. Uh, look over here at Psalms 102. That's where the prophecy comes from, verse 25. Of old hast thou, thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish. But thou shalt endure, yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment as a vesture, shalt thou change them. God's going to change this world. They're going to be changed. We know by the Apostle Peter how they're going to be changed. He said they're going to be burned up with a fervent heat, even the elements itself. How'd you like to be a tree hugger on that day? <laughs> yeah. Go out there and grab a hole of a big old one and big old red old, Tim. Grab a piece of bark here and a piece of bark here. And when God burns this thing down, you're going to look like a big torch going right about the sky. Even the elements, the dust and the dirt, the minerals that's in the soil are going to be destroyed. We live in a changing world. But thank God we have a God who does not change. Thou art the same. Thou art the same. When God created man, He created us to be like Him. He created us in His image. His likeness. Genesis 1.26 And God said, let us, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in His own image and the image of God created He Him male and female, stick that in your... Yeah, think about that for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perverts. Yep. Yeah, man. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. God created the heavens and the earth, and all that's in it, and the sixth day created man and gave it all to him. And before it's all said and done, he surrendered to the hand of, the, of Satan, and this world has fell into sin and has been changing from life unto death every day since. Yes. Yes. From life unto death every day since. Only God knows when that time. He knows the allotted time for you. He knows the allotted time for me. He also knows his allotted time schedule for this earth, for his plans upon this earth. Listen, folks, God's going to roll it all up on these days. It's all going to come to an end because He doesn't change. Amen. There's a need. It's time for a change for man to change. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, this is the book of generations of Adam and the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him, male and female, created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created and Adam lived 130 years and begot a son. Now listen, in his own likeness, after his image. What happened? What happened between uh, Genesis 1 and, and uh, Genesis uh, chapter 5 here? Sin happened. Instead of carrying the, the likeness of God in our life, we now carry the image of of, of Adam has been stamped. That Adamic nature has been stamped in our life. And if we're ever to know what to, to get back to what God created us for, which was life, then there has to be a change. Yep. Man. There has to be a change. Man tries it by his own power, by his own will. It doesn't work. Romans chapter 1 verse 23 says, and they change the 
uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to a birds and four-footed beast and creepy things. We don't want anything to do with God, so we just change it. We just rub him out of our, we'll get rid of the Ten Commandments, we'll get rid of the Bible, we'll get rid of, you know, we'll call churches a bunch of rebels, and, and we'll, we'll just, we're going to get rid of all of that. And they'll start naming everything after critters. Yep. You ever look at all the, the sports teams that's out there and how they're named after animals? Or something along those lines. They'll be named, most of them named after, you know, a bird, a snake, or, you know, a fish or something. <laughs> a few of them still named after Indians, but they're changing. They're changing that, amen. He said, well, Gary, that, you talking about that being some kind of a Placement for God? <clears throat> well, their stadiums are full today. People shouting and hollering, yeah. having a good time. Yeah. Throw you up another brewski and hot dog and peanuts and cracker jacks and knock one out of the park and glory to God if it goes into overtime. <laughs> but you let the preacher preach by five minutes over time. So, hey, what are they doing? I'm going to burn the roast. <laughs> Our meatloaf. <laughs> we need a change. Yeah. It's time for a change. Yes, it is. Time for God's people to be back to being God's people. Yeah. To allow the glory of God to shine out of our lives, to live innocent through us. The man has to be changed to get there. Leviticus chapter 13, beginning verse 14. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. The Bible says we're all, all as an unclean thing. Yeah. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy, or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, that at the plague he is clean. There can be a change. Man born in sin can be changed. Yes. Isaiah kind of put it this way. God said, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be wool. God's willing to change a life. Yes. He's willing to take a life that's been steeped in sin, that has that Adamic nature stamped. I don't care how deep it goes, how ugly it gets. God is able to change that life. Amen. He said, well, I'm too great a sinner. The roof will cave in if I come to church. Well, it might. I don't know. It's an old building. But I know it's time for a change. Your life needs to be transformed by the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 45, says it something like this. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. A life-giving spirit. Speaking of Christ. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. You're in that natural body. You're in that natural, Adamic body that's drawn to sin like a magnet is to metal. But God can change that. Yes, he can change your wonder. Yes, He can. Praise the Lord. To where you want the things of God. The first man is the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. We're just, we're just like Adam. We're not... not any better? We have to have a change. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. How about that for a promise? God said there's a change. I'm changing you right now. You are being changed. As you look into God's Word, and His Word begins to transform you, as we look back there in Corinthians, his, it transforms, it changes us until the glory of God begins to shine out in our life. But not only is He going to change our physical life, one of these days He's going to change this physical body. Yes. 
into a spiritual body. One that can inhabit the courts of heaven because the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 15, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit corruption. It, you have to have a change to be able to step on those streets of gold. The Bible says in 8.29 that God's work in our life as His children. He has predestined us to be conformed. His purpose, absolute purpose of God's heart is for you to be conformed to the image of His Son. God wants you to look like Jesus. When they first called them Christians, it was a slur word. They called them Christians. Why? Because then people over at Antioch were acting like little Jesus, little Christ. The glory of God was shining out of it. They didn't like it. The world don't like it. And the world will never like it. But I'm telling you this. God looks upon every Christian that shines out the glory of God like a little light bulb shining down here in the darkness. Oh, you not that you're the light of this world? What kind of a light are you going to reflect? You've got to reflect Christ. You're the moon. You don't have any light within yourself. But that sun can hit you to full moon. That sun can hit you to partial moon. You can shine the light of Christ out in your life. It's time for a change. It's time for us to quit reflecting the things of this world and start reflecting Jesus. If we've been saved, if we've been changed, if the leprosy of sin has been taken away, if our souls have been made white by the blood of Christ, then we ought to reflect the glory of God in how we live. And some of these days there's going to be a change of location. Yes, glory. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Amen. Brother Kenny called me last Sunday. And uh, he's called to check, he's called to check up on me, what he was calling to do. He's, he's uh, uh, of course, I've been counseling with him, talking with him. And Sunday after he got home, we sat there and, and waiting, and the video got put up. Wasn't long after the video got put up, he called me. He just he said, I'm just checking on you. See how you doing? I said, Oh, I said, I'm sick. Oh, you sick? He said, Well, I noticed you wasn't in church this morning. I wasn't preaching. I guess he thought I'd have scounded somewhere. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna leave town. Yeah. I'm gonna leave out of here. Amen. I'm gonna leave out of here shouting glory. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I'll show you a mystery. We should not all sleep. You know, whether I die before it happens or not, it didn't matter. I'm going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? The ticket's been paid. Salvation's been paid. Amen. The change is going to be from this world to the next. This body is going to be changed to a body that's fit for the world to come. The body that you carry now is not fit for you. Flesh and blood ain't going to make it there. No, man. But he's going to change this body. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, the trumpet of the sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So in this corruptible shall I put on incorruption. And this mortal shall I put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of the law of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory. Amen. Through our Lord, yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Folks, we're going to have a change of location one of these days that's yeah. out of this world. Glory, hallelujah. We sing about, I got a mansion. Yes. You know, I don't care what the new versions say. Some of them say, you know, we got a whole <coughs> We got a little hotel room up here on the side of the wall. So, the Bible says it's a mansion. Yeah. I don't know. I think about him and building the heavens and the earth in six days. He won't have no problem putting a mansion up for me. Yeah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 says, For many walk of whom I have told you often, now tell you even weeping, 
that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. This world that we live in is an enemy to Christ. It's an enemy to the cross. <coughs> it stands in offense. It stands and is offended by you if you live for Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You know, one of the marks of, of, of a Christian who has upon their heart a desire to live for God is that change of location. Yeah. It ought never be far from our minds. But today, the world of people are passing on, well, the rapture is not going to happen. I, did, I looked, I, I run down through the internet. You can find sermon of sermon of sermon of sermon of sermon. There's not going to be any, any uh, rapture of the church. We're going to go through the tribulation period. We're going to go through all. Baloney. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's right. Amen. The Bible teaches we've not been, we have not been destined under wrath. Not appointed under wrath. We've been saved by the grace of God. We've been, we, our destiny is is to be raptured from this world. Yes, amen. Looking for that blessed hope. Their end is destruction. They mine earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We're going to be changed and we're going to be changed by Christ. Yes. Our, our sin nature is changed by Christ. The life that we live is changed by Christ, by his word. One of these days this body is going to be changed by Christ. It will be in subjection to him and to the world to come. It will be able to function and live in that world. 1 John 3, 2 says it like this, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Yes. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. We know. What's well, good to know something this way? Yes. We live in a world that doesn't know a whole bunch. Well, they got a lot of smarts. Don't, don't get me wrong there. They got, they got some book learning going on for them. There's some, but there's just some things they don't know. And this world doesn't know doesn't want to know. But we know. It does not appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, He's coming and He's coming again, and He's coming soon, and we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Change of location. Change of body. Change of our wretched, miserable, sinful soul. It's time for a change. Time for a change. If you don't know Christ, it's time to get that sin nature set up. Get changed. If you're a Christian living for Christ, and it's time for a change to make sure as you look steadfastly into the Word of God, that you're shining the glory of Christ in your life. Living for Him. And one of these days it's going to be a thing. Time for a change of location and a change of bodies. I pray that you are prepared for that. The only means of being there is to receive Christ as your only hope of eternal life. Amen. You'll not get saved any other way Amen. than to receive Christ by faith and His atoning work, His atoning death, His birth, His resurrection Amen. as the means of eternal life for you. Let's pray. Our Father, we give you thanks again and praise again for your goodness, your mercy. Lord God, come and I, I see so many things that need to change around us. I, and Father, this world's not going to change. I, I look at it and I mourn at the way the world is and the way uh, governments act and react and, and all the garbage and all the foolishness of man. And I think, boy, there needs to be a change, Lord, but there's never going to be a change in this world. 
until man's heart is changed. So God, I know we can't see ever see this world come to a place where it's going to get any better than to be someplace that's just rolled up like an old garment and burnt. But Father, for individuals, for every person who will turn their ear to the wooing and the call of the Holy Ghost, who will turn their back upon this world and their face to heaven, Father, who will allow Calvary to be the sole source of the payment for their sins, who will allow the blood of Christ to cleanse them from all of their unrighteousness, Father, who will trust completely and totally in the power of His resurrection as their eternal hope for heaven. I pray to God that multitudes, Father, will make that change. Make that change. Father, it is time for a change. And I pray, God, that it begins with me and with those that are here in this church, in the city we live in. Let it be us who change, that we might be changers in this world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Time for a change. Time for a change.